Well, here I am outside of the BC Legislative Building in Victoria, um, and certainly been a lot of news around here because of what came up yesterday. As some of you might have heard, I'm not sure all across the country, but some of you might have heard uh, that according to a former uh, BC Cabinet Minister, our Premier Gordon Campbell is a big fat bully. Um, well, at least that's one particular opinion. And actually, when you look at the newspapers today, it certainly got a lot of attention. Um, there's the Times columnist, which is Victoria's big paper, uh, talking about the um, Premier being called a bully. And then, of course, you've got uh, the Globe and Mail, and on the front section, you've, you've got a reference to the fact that there's something inside the newspaper. So inside the BC section, BC Liberals self-destructing is what's got it here. And then on the front page of the National Post, you can find out what kind of um, purses you want to buy if you're a vegetarian or something like that. Anyway, okay, well, it uh, certainly got uh, some people's attention. So it's rather interesting because all this stuff came up about bullying, but really it was actually earlier on this week, just a couple days ago, that an article captured my attention. Um, well, it was a lot of stuff in the press actually that caught my attention, and it was about uh, Aung San Suu Kyi uh, from Burma, who was being released by the military dictatorship. Uh, for the last uh, 15 of 21 years, she's been under house arrest, and that was just because when they had won, her party had won fair elections 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago, um, the generals didn't like that decision, so they just kept on with her dictatorship, and most of the time they kept her in detention. And it was rather intriguing, the things that I was reading, um, such as she was having to be very careful about what she was saying when she has just been released, because I guess at any time they can throw her back in again. And so she was saying that she feels no antagonism towards the generals who have basically locked her up, didn't allow her to actually be by her husband's side uh, when he was actually dying many years ago, all that kind of stuff. Something that I thought was interesting in an editorial in the Globe and Mail, it talks about if she proceeds judiciously, she may be able to use her popularity and authority to push further relaxation of military rule. And I thought, isn't this true of bullies as a whole, which is that as opposed to getting what um, should be coming their way, everyone else in fact has to tiptoe around them. And um, that, that she and so many other people um, who have been brutalized, one of, the, one of the worst dictatorships actually in the world, um, that they actually have to worry about what they're saying. And, and so it's the kind of thing that when I was thinking about the whole bullying, I realized that bullies rule in this world and they'll continue to rule until things drastically change, but, but they don't. And when we think about Myanmar, for example, um, when we think about what's going on there, um, it's kind of like a, a, an example of a bully again because what you've got is friends in high places who are actually supporting them. China and India continue to buy the resources um, that pads the pockets of the generals living a very, very, very high life while the rest of uh, Myanmar, the citizens of Myanmar, actually have a um, earnings of less than that of Haiti before or after the earthquake. So it, it's the kind of thing that you know, I know when we're talking about bullies, you're usually not talking about a military dictatorship or a bunch of generals because, of course, if you go against them, well, they can kill you. And so that's not the usual situation that you're dealing with. But when we, when we think back to what actually happened here yesterday, um, Bill Bennett was a cabinet minister. He was thrown out of the uh, cabinet uh, yesterday morning. He flew back over here to Victoria. That was happening in Vancouver where he's kicked out. He flew over here and then he went on a 37 minute rant, as the media says, um, in which he was talking about all the different stuff about Bennett. Here's something that was interesting that caught my attention and I actually kept it and circled it just earlier in the week. This is what he got in trouble for. He was suggesting that the Premier, who's already decided he has to step down because he's in so much hot water, and that they are going to be having a leadership in February. This is what the, uh, the minister said. He said, I think it's important, first of all, that the government be kept in order. And that obviously means Mr. Campbell has to depart um, as soon as he has a, a decent chance to look after a few friends. I don't know what that means. And send out a few resumes. And generally speaking, people in the Liberal Party would like to see Mr. Campbell leave with dignity. So I think that means um, he better leave pretty quickly. So here's a guy who's talking about the fact that the um, he wants the Premier to be able to leave in dignity. Well, the headlines are the fact that he's just this big bully. Some of the things that he said um, when he was talking about Campbell, he said, you have almost a battered wife syndrome. He's talking about the caucus environment for the Liberal Party. He's not a nice man. He's not a nice man. He's a very, very intimidating human being and does have a temper. He took me behind the barn and started to shout at me and got right in my face and he was so upset that spittle came out of his mouth and got on my face. 
face and he sort of um, wipes it aside when he was talking to the reporters. In response to a reporter saying this, have you seen members in tears after getting a shellacking from him? The um, former cabinet minister, Mr. Bennett, said absolutely. If you want to see more, I'm sure there's lots of uh, video streams on it on the media sites, but if you go to CBC, for example, you can go to cbc.ca uh, slash bc slash video audio and you'll be able to see at least a few minutes of some of the things that he was saying. Here's the thing when I think about the allegations of a bully. In a case like this, here's a guy who was dumped from cabinet. So it could just be, look, this is a complete lie. He's lashing out. And, uh, and, you know, and that's one of the realities in the workplace that you have to deal with when someone is actually leaving or is kicked out and then they start talking about stuff. But here's another scenario, and I'm not, you know, without knowing the details, here's another scenario um, that very well could happen in, let's say, other situations. And one of the things is if you've got someone in a position of power, uh, now you take someone like a premier, in our Canadian system, cripe, you got the premier who's got more power than a lot of dictatorships because, um, not with the military side of it, um, but it's just because um, you've got to be uh, keeping that guy happy, um, and if you don't, then you're out of cabinet, you don't get all the perks that go with it, uh, driver, uh, staff, extra money, bigger pension, flying all over the place, uh, you know, people taking care of you all the time, all that kind of stuff. Uh, let alone, you could actually be thrown out of the caucus if they don't like you, and then come next nomination time, they're gonna gang up on you. So here is, and, and you got no legal repercussions whatsoever, none whatsoever, if you're fired from cabinet. So if you're talking about someone who's being bullied and they decide to stay on, here's certainly an opportunity where you're thinking, well, I better shut up if I wanna, you know, if I feel I can do some good. I don't know whether he does some good or not, um, but if someone feels as though they wanna do that. And how often does that actually take place in a workplace? People are thinking about their mortgages, they're thinking about, you know, putting their kids in school, all kinds of stuff, and they're thinking, I can't say or do anything because the boss is a bully, and therefore I gotta go along with it. And therefore we only hear about it after the fact, after the person's actually left. So the difficulty is, you know, is there truth to it or is there not? Uh, one of the difficulties is that um, at this point, when you've got other people, let's say, in the cabinet, um, what are they going to say? Are they going to say, yeah, the guy's been a big bully? Uh, um, you know, no, at this point, uh, when they see what happens when you go against the guy in any way, um, they know that they could be thrown out as well. So it's also going to be very difficult for someone to even come to uh, the defense, even if there was truth to it. So the difficulty is when you're talking about bullying in the workplace, um, you can be up against um, situations where it's very difficult. You're going to be speaking alone. No one is going to be, um, um, no one is perhaps going to be paying you attention. As a matter of fact, um, you could be telling the complete truth and other people are going to be lying against you. Once again, you don't know, so it can be often very difficult. And how about the fact that there might have been some of this stuff or there might have been rumors that were going on? And this was interesting. In the Times Colonist, in the editorial section, you had two different comments on this. One of the one is by Les Lane. He's an editorialist. Uh, sorry, he's a columnist. He said, there were whispers of volcanic temper that occasionally uh, erupted. And then from the editorial board, there was something else that they said. What he had to say was not pretty, that is Mr. Bennett, although it was in line with whispering whisper descriptions of Campbell's demeanors over the years. Now, this is interesting. I follow politics and I never heard anything along those lines at all. So obviously it's the kind of stuff that if the press is saying there was whisper about it, but no one ever wanted to go into it, um, then, then it becomes very, very difficult for someone to actually say, well, gee, someone actually knew that it was going on. It sounds like at the very least there was rumors of it going on. Again, bringing it back to the workplace. How many times have people, you know, when I've uh, heard the situations where they said, oh yeah, they knew that Stephen was like this, or they knew that Bob or Susan was like this, but no one ever wanted to look into it. No one ever wanted to lift up that stone and actually see what was going on. Bullying in the workplace or bullying in government or bullying, um, you know, by a dictatorial junta will go on um, they will rule for a long time unless people are willing to actually stand up and realize, hey, I could lose something. Now, I'm not talking about the dictatorship where you could lose your life, but in the workplace, you could lose status, you could lose your job, you could lose a lot of big opportunities. You usually will have some sort of legal, legal percussions, repercussions somewhere um, if it's something that can be proven, but it's not a difficult process to do. So when people say in the workplace that uh, bullying behavior is unacceptable and we've got all these programs and we've got days and pink days and all kinds of stuff for the bullies, the fact is that's a lot of crap. Until people are willing to speak up, stand up, and actually say something, um, and then other people will actually look at them in an honest way, the bullies are gonna rule. That's all there is to it. If you've got something different to say, if you've got examples where uh, you've been effective in dealing with a bully or not, let me know. Send me an email to stephen at stephenhammond.ca. That's Stephen with a PH at stephenhammond.ca. Or go to my website and send me some information, www.stephenhammond.ca. Hate to say it, but bullies rule.